A mysterious ruin in southern Africa rises out of the highland plains. These walls have been empty for centuries and were considered old before the first European settlers arrived here. The African people who lived around the ruins, the Shona, called them Great Zimbabwe, or stone houses, but they offered few clues to what happened to the people who lived here. In the 1800s, European colonists who first saw the structures did not believe that Africans could have built them. Instead, they thought the houses were the product of an ancient white civilization that disappeared thousands of years ago. Europeans admired African art, but they considered African science and technology to be inferior. They believed that Europeans were superior to Africans, who they thought were primitive and incapable of building complex structures. Zimbabwe was a problem for European scholars. If native Africans had built this complex of granite walls and towers, it was proof that they were not inferior after all. Europeans turned to a German geologist, Karl Mauch, for an explanation. Mauch tried to take credit for Zimbabwe away from native Africans and make European domination seem like a natural condition. Mauch was not the only one with a theory about Zimbabwe. Cecil Rhodes was a driving force behind the European colonization of Southern Africa, and he was determined to prove the theory that Great Zimbabwe had been the capital of an ancient Phoenician colony. To prove his theory, Rhodes hired Richard Hall to inspect the ruins. It was Hall's job to protect Great Zimbabwe, but in his eagerness to find evidence of the Phoenicians, he stripped the ruins of all its artifacts. Archaeologists in England raised a huge outcry over Hall's poor treatment of the site, and they demanded that he be replaced. So uh, an unbiased professional archaeologist was sent in by the British Association of Advance for the Advancement of Science in 1906, uh, a fellow by the name of David Randall McIver, who conducted brief excavations in what was left of archaeological deposits at the site, and came to the conclusion that they were entirely of African origin and medieval in date, and he even estimated the age for the elliptical building uh, at somewhere in the 15th century due to his knowledge uh, of the Chinese glassware found in the site. MacGyver found that Great Zimbabwe had been part of a thriving African culture. It was home to skilled artisans and stonemasons who built the complex, and it was a magnet for trade from as far away as China. In the 1300s, Europe was in the Middle Ages, but Great Zimbabwe's master masons began work on their most enduring monument, the Great Enclosure. MacGyver's findings shocked the white-dominated government of Rhodesia, where Great Zimbabwe stood. At the time, the idea that Africans were capable of an achievement on such a scale disproved the colonial view that Africans were uncivilized. The Rhodesian government rejected MacIver's findings and covered up the truth until 1929, when English archaeologist Gertrude Caton Thompson confirmed his findings. In 1979, after years of civil war, Rhodesia came under black majority rule. The new government changed the name of the country to Zimbabwe, out of respect for the ancient culture that had come before them. Today, much remains unknown about the rise and fall of Great Zimbabwe. But the people of present-day Zimbabwe will continue to explore their past. And with the help of archaeologists, it is possible that we may one day uncover the long-hidden secrets of the men and women who built this medieval wonder.